Long considered to be the very personification of glamour, Audrey Hepburn's remarkable acting career would earn her the reputation as one of the industry's most popular performers of all time. Whether it was Roman Holiday or Breakfast at Tiffany's, once Audrey took to the screen, it was practically impossible to take your eyes off of her. As such, it only makes sense that during the height of her career, Audrey lived in a Los Angeles estate fit for a princess. In fact, her house was so incredible it would later become home to a number of other Hollywood elites, including Mia Farrow, David Niven, and the actress who the property was later named after, Eva Gabor. Located in the Los Angeles, California neighborhood of Homeby Hills, the Eva Gabor estate was originally designed and constructed in 1938 by the man referred to as the architect of the stars, Paul Williams. When the unit was complete, it boasted six bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms, a private tennis court, and a detached guest house on a little over one acre of land. Audrey lived here alongside her husband, Mel Fair, and she eventually departed from Hollywood shortly after this marriage ended in 1968. For the most part, however, the design of the house remains the same today, even if the decor has obviously changed in the intervening years. Located behind two large and dramatic gates, the house features a brick motor core out front. Stepping through the threshold of the front door will take you into the home's entryway with a curving staircase, symmetrical floor to ceiling mirrors, and a grand crystal chandelier, all of which serve as a great signifier of the home's grandeur. Speaking of grand spaces, the home's living room is large, cozy, and comes complete with a fireplace as well as a wall of built-in bookshelves. The nearby family room is equally as comforting, thanks in large part to its windows which offer a ton of natural light with views of the property's gardens. I can't help but imagine Audrey acting out a real life scene from her bookshop in one of my favorite films, Funny Face. But reading wasn't the only thing Audrey would get up to here. She was also a great cook, which is probably why this home has not one, not two, but three separate dining areas. First, there's a casual eating area that overlooks the home's backyard. Then, there's the black and white checkered floors in the dining room that offer a retro feel. And finally, there's the gourmet kitchen itself, where Audrey used to cook colorful, healthy meals. You can find out a lot more about those meals in her son's book, Audrey at Home. This home also boasted a series of massive bedrooms, including the home's deluxe master suite. But no Hollywood home is complete without an exciting backyard. Audrey's featured a tennis court, lush lawns, a well-maintained garden, and a very large swimming pool. As perfect as this spot was to unwind, after retiring from the movies in 1968, Audrey would sell this home and move to the one place where she was happier than anywhere else, Switzerland. Not everyone knows this, but Audrey Hepburn spent her final three decades on this planet as a Swiss resident. After her time as an entertainer came to an end, she retreated from the public eye and spent the rest of her life as a resident of Tolokinas, a village located only a few miles from the municipality of Morgus. Audrey's home was known throughout the village as La Paisible, which is French for peaceful and tranquil. As the name implies, Audrey finally found her little piece of heaven with this estate. The main structure is a large, modernized farmhouse, which dates back to the 1700s. It also featured all of the trappings of a movie star home, including an elegant salon with charming furniture, a grand piano, as well as loads of framed photos of Audrey and her many famous friends. According to reports from the Arunasu family, who lived on this estate alongside Hepburn as the property's gardener and caretakers with their young children, Audrey often hosted her many famous friends here, including Roger Moore, Robert Wagner, and the pianist Michael Tilson Thomas. But Audrey's favorite thing to do was tend to the property's garden where she worked tirelessly alongside her gardener Giovanni, helping him tend to the home's roses. Giovanni's wife, Ruchita, remembers how much these flowers meant to Audrey, telling Medium, She would pick lots of flowers and fill the house with bouquets. I made it a point to bring in bouquets and arrange them around the house when I knew she was coming back from a trip because I knew how much she loved flowers. Surrounded by roses, La Paisible was always there when Hepburn was most at ease, unwinding after long trips to some of the poorest and most disenfranchised parts of the world as an ambassador to UNICEF. 
Here, Audrey was able to relax, take in the pure air of the beautiful Swiss countryside and enjoy simple pleasures in life like fresh food as well as a gang of lively Jack Russell Terriers she doted upon and let run all over the house. Audrey's favorite dish of all was one that couldn't have been any simpler to make, pasta with tomato sauce and lots of fresh basil. She would personally fetch this from her garden. In other words, life at La Pesible was unhurried and relaxing. Audrey even taught Runis' young daughter how to swim in the property's pool while their other children would lie on her bed watching videos on her TV set. Eventually, this fairy tale life came to an end when Audrey passed away on January 20th, 1993. Several years after her death, this estate was sold. The family living here returned to their native Sardinia and took Audrey's favorite dog Penny with them, caring for her until her death at the age of 19. Hepburn was buried not far from this home in a humble and well-kept grave in the area's small local cemetery among the village's far less famous residents. It's kind of surreal to come across a celebrity's name on such an unassuming stone cross, but according to records, plans to exploit Hepburn's fame and attract visitors to the area failed. A local museum they created in her name is permanently closed, but some of her biggest fans can still follow a map that guides tourists across her former home, favorite cafes, and the town hall where she got married to Italian psychiatrist Andrea Dotti in 1969. Considering she married an Italian man, it makes a lot of sense that as much as Audrey adored Switzerland, there was one other place in Europe near to her heart, the city of Rome. The top floor of a 1930s palazzino in Rome's Parioli district was originally designated to be enjoyed as a spot to leisure, not a residence. But once Audrey Hepburn set her sights on the unit spaces, drenched in daylight, with wide windows framing the city's vista, she turned it into a penthouse suite. Today, this 5,700 square foot dwelling is owned by a contemporary couple who have brought in Milan designer Christina Celestino to author a tranquil retreat that feels at home in its urban environment. For starters, the living area not only opens to the terrace, it also faces west to ensure for some sunset views. And the property's bedrooms, they've been sequestered to the home's south wing, which leaves the kitchen and dining areas facing north. Throughout the entire home, tonal floors of classic Italian travertine, as well as bleached oak tiles have been arranged in a woven pattern. Then there's the muted mint of the entrance hall, which helps bring an instant sense of calm, an aesthetic that's been carried over to the living and dining areas of the home too. Elsewhere around the property, you'll find a number of boxy alcoves that capture the views and create perfect spots for modern furniture, like the white section on the living room, the bronze leather in the lounge, or the guest suite's upholstered bed. Primary suite's dressing room and bathroom features a pink palette, which fosters a sense of femininity that Audrey would have loved. All of this to say that now more than ever, Audrey Hepburn's former Palazzino is a sight to behold. It's also the perfect spot to daydream while enjoying the perfect Roman holiday. There you have it, the most important homes in the life of the late and great Audrey Hepburn. Which one resonates with you the most? Personally, the more I learned about her home in Switzerland, the more I imagined myself living there. But I'd love to hear what you all think. So before leaving, be sure to take a second to answer the following question. Would you rather live a quiet life in the idyllic Swiss countryside or the high life in a penthouse suite in the middle of Rome? Let me know which of Audrey's former lifestyles inspires you the most in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you don't miss an episode. My name's Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.